Well, if you've been looking around, you know there's a lot to know and understand about Medicaid in Indiana and Medicaid in general. Thankfully, our expert in elder law, Gary Price, is here to guide us. Good morning. Good morning. We've talked about over the years the myths and, and the urban legends that are out there. So Medicaid is just confusing to all of us anyway, but what's one of the biggest mistakes we make when yeah. we're even thinking about it or having that conversation with you? Right, uh, and, and I get this, <clears throat> I get this every week, no question about it, multiple times every week. So we're talking about people who either need uh, some personal need services in home or need long-term care. And we're talking about nursing facilities, etc. Nursing cetera. facilities, okay. yeah, for an extended period of time. Maybe not forever, but an extended period of time. And the mistake is when, you, when you're at that situation, there's two choices. Either you're going to private pay or you're going to uh, utilize Medicaid. Uh, there, uh, there's, the third would be if you had long-term care insurance, but many, most people don't. So the choices are either private pay or Medicaid. And the mistake is they don't look into Medicaid. They immediately dismiss it thinking they've got too much money and therefore they need to private pay. That's not the case. Medicaid has rules for folks that feel like they have too much money and need to private pay. And there are rules that allow them to shelter that money uh, and, and still be eligible and be eligible for Medicaid. Well, that brings up a host of questions. For example, if it's your spouse who needs the Medicaid, what? how does that impact the spouse who, spouse who remains at home or the home itself? Yeah, so there, there are specific rules for married couples. And generally speaking, we can protect, we can certainly protect the home, no question. Uh, we can protect one vehicle, no question. But generally speaking, for a married couple and one spouse is needing Medicaid, we can protect all the assets and still get that spouse on Medicaid. But what's the time stamp on that, Gary? So when, when should we start this planning? What if we don't need it right now so it's not on our radar? So the, the, the reason to have that conversation now, even though you don't need it, is so at least you have the knowledge. So in the event you do need it in the future, you know, most people when they come see me because it's now it's time, we need it, <laughs> they're scared to death. Well, of course And they, they didn't just come, they just weren't scared yesterday and come to see me. They've been sleep, not sleeping at night for weeks and thinking the worst. Um, get some knowledge now and you'll understand what to expect if, hopefully that never happens, but if that day comes where you need the, the assistance. Now, do you talk about this in that first meeting when people come to you and just kind of walk through estate planning? Always. Okay. Always. Um, always give them the option. Sometimes they don't want to talk about it, but always that option is there to talk about it, sure. Well, I mean, you've really educated me in the you know conversations we've had because I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about it either, and I would assume that that is for people who are living at the poverty level and it would not be available to me. Right. Uh, you're, you're not alone. Well, apparently not. So is that, if you do address that in your book? A little bit, yeah. Okay. A little how, bit. How do they, how do they get You call it? my office, 812-475-8444. We send you a free copy. Thank you, Gary. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. We'll be back with more Local Lifestyles right after this. Stick around.